Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tenerst Human, and welcome to this campaign strategy guide for Carthage in Rome Total War. Today, we're going to look into the ideal campaign strategy, but also consider historical Carthage. How do they get to where they are at the start of the game here, and indeed, how do they actually get on in real life? We can obviously also look at a bit of role play, how you might like to play this particular campaign. If you've been around the channel for a little while, you may have seen I've already got a campaign strategy guide for Armenia and Sivia. And when we looked at those, we looked in depth at the army and the battlefield strategy. Naturally, that's going to be a vital part of any campaign. This time, though, I'm going to do that in a separate video. That will come out on the Tuesday after this. Indeed, that's going to be the plan for the rest of these guys from here on in. A separate battlefield strategy guide. So for now, let's get into Carthage and look at their history. Carthage started out as one of many trading colonies of the Phoenician trade network. This stretched from Sidon and Tyre in the east, out to Cadiz in the west, beyond the Straits of Gibraltar. From its foundation in 814 BC, Carthage would have had to struggle with its local Libyan neighbours, many of whom would force them to pay tribute. But over time, Carthage would gain more power and influence and be able to turn the tables on its Libyan neighbours. You might think that the fall of the Phoenician Empire in the 6th century BC would lead to Carthage collapse in two, but on the contrary, this really freed the shackles of the Carthaginians, and this would mean that they could take up the mantle of the Mediterranean Sea and become the real leaders in trade. The game begins in 270 BC, and it has in fact been a fairly turbulent 50 years or so for Carthage. The issue wasn't the Romans though, it was actually the Greeks. You see, both the Greeks and the Phoenicians had a vast amount of colonies throughout the Mediterranean Sea. This really brought them out as rivals to each other, in particular because Carthage was gaining such a monopoly in the west. Gaphicles, the tyrant of Syracuse, would prove to be a massive thorn in their side. Indeed, Sicily would really be a big cause of issues for the Carthaginians, many of which will come to in the game once the Romans start getting in the way. But for now, it's just the Greeks, although it should be said that this is a chap here that Machiavelli quotes as one of those who, by their crimes, comes to be prince. So you can probably tell what this chap is like. In 311 BC, it looked like the Carthaginians were going to win this war as they besieged Syracuse after the Battle of the Himera River. But Agathocles was nothing if he wasn't wily, and in a weird foreshadowing of Scipio Africanus's move in the Second Punic War, he would take the army over to North Africa itself and try and distract the Carthaginians. And indeed, he went and ravaged the land for several years until he was finally defeated and sent off home. With the Carthaginians having failed to take Sicily, Agathocles would soon pass away and the power vacuum would cause yet more problems for them, finally allowing the Romans to have a bit of a foothold at Masana. And this really leaves us where we are at the start of the game, a very messy Sicily and an opportunity for the Greeks, the Carthaginians and the Romans. Carthage, 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 what are we going to do with you? They are certainly a faction who, uh, frankly, I've never seen do well in this game whatsoever. Pretty much every time I play this, new media end up taking North Africa. Occasionally, occasionally the Carthaginians do manage that, but they're pretty much knocked out by the Romans every time. So I think our main tactic for this campaign is to go and smash Rome ASAP. I think I said with the Armenian Scythia campaign guides that it's the marvelous thing about them is they're so far from Rome you can play a nice slow game but your empires and one day you get to smash into the mask of life that is the Roman factions but with Carthage you don't really have that luxury you're gonna you're gonna end up in a war pretty darn quickly there are of course several ways you can play this campaign and if you want to hold back against the Romans you're absolutely welcome but I definitely think the optimal way is to go and smash them early on so what you really want to be thinking about is what do you have around to smash them with. Now, naturally, the Scipiones are quite weak. Uh, overall, you're definitely going to be stronger than at this stage. Now, if you're playing this Scipiones, you send all your forces straight over here and you smash Syracuse, smash Lilibaeum in about five turns. The, the AI isn't really going to send those forces quite as dramatically quickly. So what you need to do is make sure you're ready to pounce. So what it's probably worth doing here is just putting the uh, Fog of War back on because it's worth seeing what we actually see ourselves because currently we can't see anything. So naturally, what you would be doing, of course, sending your spy over to Messana. Whether you went inside or not, it's a different matter. They seem to have spotted us. But yes, you can certainly see they have a few units here. We're going to need a little bit more than a kind of ragtag force we've got here. This is actually probably the best army you've got. Best, I think. To start moving forward with it more so so what i would suggest is you want to gather all your forces as much as possible and that includes 
grabbing some of your men from over here too. Perhaps leave a tiny, tiny force, but yeah, just really pack your armies into Sicily here. It might have historically been really uh, very much the despair of the Carthaginians, but we're going to make it work for us on this occasion. With our armies meeting up over in Sicily then, we need to start thinking about how we're going to fund this war because if we're going to smash straight into the Romans, we need to make sure we're getting troops out and we need to make sure we have the infrastructure. So get yourself a port in Thapsis and Lilibaeum. That is going to make a big difference to your economy. Remember, in Rome Total War, it's all about the ports and the naval trade. Now, Carthage already has a port. So you could upgrade that stretch ship, right? Might well be a sensible plan, but I'd probably hold off on that just for a few turns because I think cavalry stables is going to be your best bet. That's because we want to get out the elephants. These are obviously going to be a key part of winning your battles with Rome. They're not as demonic as the later versions, but certainly used well at the start of the game. It's really going to make the difference for your armies. That leaves us pondering the rest of our settlements. Now, over here, Carolus probably should just get itself a wooden palisade, as I've already alluded to. But over here in Parma, we do have a few units we might be able to make use of. And we've also got the big force over here in Cordoba. This is a good little army. You don't want to be doing nothing in Spain. You can make some very good headway by smashing into various different settlements. But it does bring us onto diplomacy a little bit, because who are we going to ally with? Who are we going to make enemies with? Well, I would probably suggest I would probably suggest that you want to get this diplomat over here to talk to Numidia. Now, first of all, you want trade rights, obviously. You might want a bit of map information trade if you like that kind of thing. Maybe you want to make a bit of money off them. Whatever you want to do is fine, but just consider if you're going to have an alliance or not. An alliance with them is probably a sensible idea, because whilst it won't necessarily last, it might buy a bit of time. You certainly don't want to be stabbed in the back by them while your forces are ploughing into Italy. So that's just something for you to think about. Of course, you could send this army over here. You might actually distract them and pull their forces across to the west. That might work in your favour, but I would suggest probably what you want to do is take this army and head eastward up the Iberian Peninsula. Part of the reason for this is because you've got several ports you can make use of, but at the moment, Cordoba is too small, and the same goes for Parma here. We want these both to grow. So before we manage to do anything with regards to uh, taking these towns over here, Oscar and Cafaganova, we need to make sure that we can get these up to ports. That means we want to think about the enslaving of Messana over here. We're obviously going to take that nice and early. That's certainly the plan anyway. We will enslave it. That will give us the population we need in any town with governors. So just beware when you enslave early on. You want to make sure you've got your governors in the right place. So that will be over here in Parma and over here in Cordoba. We want the population to go to these two towns only. So yes, we do currently have a chap over here in Carthage. We want to take Hasdrubal out when it came to that circumstance. But nonetheless, I am going to actually start thinking about getting my attack on Kafakanova nice and quick here. I'm going to send this boat over to Parma, however long it takes. You can pick up some of the troops and we will converge over here by Carthaginova at the river. So we need to make sure we leave the general in, but otherwise we can probably start to consider getting going. You might not want to risk them dying straight away. Perhaps you want to get yourself a road, always a sensible idea, and possibly you want to go and get some trade rights. Maybe focus on Gaul if you're going to attack Spain, but of course it might be worth it just for a turn or two of Spanish trade. Picking which temple we're going to go with is actually quite an important decision and one that can be often rushed. So let's really take a bit of care and figure out what is best for us here. So we've got the Temple of Tanit here, which is for farming, and we've got Milcat over here, who is for the milk cart of trade goods. So we really just want to consider, is this going to be better farmland, or is it going to be better for trading? Now, of course, you can really have a little look in your trade goods here. Have a good look and see. Farm is 408. Obviously, we can't actually trade right now, but you can see that we've got ourselves several bits and resources to use. So I'm probably going to go for the Great Old Shrine to Milk Cart here. And to be honest, with Carthage, I'm quite often going to go for that. I probably do the same down here in Cordoba too, which you can see I have actually already clicked on here. But to be honest, it is a little bit of a shake up. I probably consider Baal quite heavily here because you want to think, where am I going to get my best troops out of? And to be honest, there are so many trade goods here. I can't not go for Milk Cart. So which probably means when I go and take this settlement over here, Cofaganova, I'm going to want to build the Trine to Baal and get that built up. 
because I really need to make sure I've got one of my towns around here on the Spanish Peninsula who are actually going to be trained into Sacred Band. I need somewhere to really focus on troop production and I guess that's going to be the one with the least advantage when it comes to farming or indeed trade. Finally, it's probably worth thinking about moving this army towards the southeast here. You want to go and grab Lepsis Magna rather than the Numidians, so you might as well head this army in that direction. I'll probably just leave one unit in the town. They don't know what tower as you go and start heading in that direction. This is worth grabbing it. No need to worry about Fapsis for a few turns. It's just sensible to go and pick this one up while you can. As we end our turn then, you'll notice that the Skippy Eyes tend to wander around for a turn or two. In my experience, they almost always attack Syracuse on turn three or four. So what we want to do is go and dump our troops over here. Don't really want us to go and hide, to be honest, but that's what we're currently doing. Pass over the troops. At this point, we have ourselves a tidy little force. Nothing huge, but certainly it could take on these guys if it needed to. We will hire the mercenaries. I would suggest you do that, if only to stop the Romans from doing the same thing. Now, I didn't mention before, but it's probably a good idea to get yourself a diplomat here too. Chat with the Greeks wouldn't be the worst idea. Ideally, what you want to do is get the Romans to attack this, and then we can go and take it without ever having war with the Greeks. Probably won't matter too much, but it's probably a sensible plan. Now as we ponder if we're going to take on the Scipiones in the field or not, it's worth bearing in mind that your scouting is very important. One thing I haven't been doing here is laying down watchtowers as I've gone. So for example, it probably makes a good sense to put down a few in key locations. You also want to be using your boats to scout because the Romans do like to land armies all over the place. And there is Admiral Marcus over here with a Brutii force, at least two generals. They could absolutely devastate our homelands over here if we aren't careful about it. And in fact, that seems to be exactly how careful we're being right now. So whilst you can obviously decide to go for this aggressive tactic, the Romans might well do the same thing. You've kind of got to be ready and expect that problem to come along, because we'll probably find in a turn or two that the Brutiis are going to land. In fact, I suspect, yes, they're right here, aren't they? They are right there ready to get in our way and land an army over here at Thapsis, which doesn't even have a wall at this point. So this is probably where, if you are paying attention, you probably would have to start doing this. This, unfortunately, is the risk that you end up taking when you take on the Romans so brutally. We haven't even waged war yet, but it's clear that war's about to go down. So we might well have to take on these guys in the field. We'll scrap them at this point, and we'll just have a little look what the Bruti eyes do. Yeah, see they have come straight over to Fapsis, we'll end it one more turn and it is under siege. So we could have had a few turns just to prepare ourselves for that war, but I'd only know, I'd only be ready for it if I'd actually had my watchtowers, my boats and my lovely spies. So at this point we're in a bit of trouble, <laughs> we're in a bit of trouble, absolutely we are. You can see there we've also got more people landing all over the place. So you need to be careful when you start this campaign, you've got to be aggressive, you've got to be ready to well yeah be ready to lose things as well but i wouldn't want to be losing any of the homeland here i would suggest keeping your spy network strong is important we could of course have been pumping out troops to these two towns for the last turn or two and that would mean we'd be just about strong enough to push these guys off just to show you that this can go several different ways on this particular occasion i put my arm in the boat and the Scipiones have immediately decided to just attack Missana. In many ways, this is actually quite a good result for us because it means we can come take them on in the field. And we'll have ourselves a nice and tidy way of destroying their army. And this means, of course, we can head on to Missana, head on to Syracuse. If you're particularly lucky, you'll end up with this situation here where the Scipiones have attacked Syracuse. They're now going to bash their heads against each other instead of you. I'm pretty sure you can beat them in the open field anyway it's nicer to have it work this way around for you. Also means you don't need to wage war with the Greeks, assuming that they take Syracuse. So we can head in straight away. Remember, you do have elephants that basically gives you early artillery in terms of breaking down walls. So just the general here, just the faction leader, in fact, will take him out. Now, uh, yeah, auto reserve will often kill your elephants because they're the one breaking down the gates. So just be aware of that. Obviously, you'd rather go in and do the battle yourself. In that case, you'll save your elephants because you're really going to want them. Now, of course, we did describe that we want to enslave the populace. This is particularly key because, as you can see there, we've grown a settlement. Palmer 
is probably not far off. Yes, up to 1739. A few turns away with a 3% population growth. Over here, we have ourselves, yes, the palace ready to be improved. So the governor's villa can be built there, which means we'll very soon have a port, Kafaganova, under siege at the moment as well. We'll soon obviously be able to get ourselves ports in all these settlements. This is why I suggest going to war with Spain and not Numidia at the start. You can trade with the Numidians, you can get yourself these ports along the northern Mediterranean coast, well, the western coast, of course. So that means we'll have ourselves a fantastic set of trade hubs to get ourselves started in the game. With the Scipiones defeated on Sicily, then, you can very easily take the whole island. Ideally, you do this without taking on Greece, but if you have to, it's not the end of the world. They're not really in your sphere of influence, all things considered. So from here, you probably want to think about what your next step is. Now, obviously, you do want to move on to Italy, and before too long, because you'll probably notice there will be boats in the oceans. And obviously, I've got the fog of war off right now, but that does mean that if you haven't got good vision you might well find them sneak up on you, like we saw with the pretty eyes a little bit earlier. So yes, from this point, it's just a matter of how quickly you want to be aggressive with the Romans. I would suggest, though, it's probably a good idea just to take the Scipiones and the pretty eyes out ASAP before they really cause any problems. And if you do that, then the game should really fall into your lap. Now, we already know that elephants are coming out of Carthage, and that is magnificent because minor cities can get you elephants so long as you have the resource, of course. We don't have it here in Lilabeum, so it's not really worth worrying about the stables over here. What instead we want to do is think about where we can get our best infantry men. So it's worth looking at the three towns you've got. And of course, Masana over here is slightly stronger when it comes to the barracks, so it's probably worth trying to get this up to the next level of barracks ASAP. At the moment, we can only get Iberian infantry, who are frankly not particularly good. Now, I am going to do a separate video that follows up this one coming out on the Tuesday after this, which will look at the battlefield tactics of the Carthaginian army. It's, of course, very important to consider. But what we need to do for now is think about how we're going to actually have the infrastructure to get all of those units. Now, our strongest units pretty much will be coming out of our stables, of course, where eventually we get the Sacred Band Cavalry, who are magnificent. Obviously, the elephants we already talked about. And, of course, the army barracks, where we'll get our Poena infantry. And, of course, the Sacred Band further on if we build the Temple of Baal. These guys are really important to us. So one thing we want to probably do, then, is think Masana, right now, has got itself a level 2 barracks. Have we got a similar thing over here? No, we don't. Okay, so Masana is where we probably want to build our barracks going forward. Probably then we want to get the Shrine of Baal because it's going to be important for us to get the Sacred Band out of here. So it's just important to kind of think about where your troops are going to come from, particularly at the start, really focus on one particular thing. Now, you notice the population's a bit short. Um, ideally, when you go and take Syracuse, you probably go and enslave it and send the people over to Masana. If not, what you could probably do is do the classic thing of pumping peasants out of your high population settlements like Carthage and sending them over and disbanding them in Masana if indeed you need the boost. But I would suggest that you focus on infantry here, which I guess leaves us with these two thinking potentially about the practice range, which, to be honest, isn't going to have particularly good results for these guys. You might not even bother them at all. You can't get archers, and when it comes down the line, you don't need the catapults just yet because you already have yourself elephants to batter down the gates. But just worthwhile thinking, elephants are going to come out of Carthage and get your infantry out of Masana over here. What do you want to do with these other settlements? Do you want to focus on economy? Do you want to get yourselves a bit of extra cav or a bit of extra infantry? I don't know. The choice is yours. But make sure you have a key town to get out your key units and that you really boost them in those directions. Let's take a good look at the Carthage building browser then because they are actually fairly blessed when it comes down to it. They have themselves plenty of infrastructure in the top level of buildings, the huge city, and with the huge populations they're going to have, that's going to be quite important. Now, the epic stone wall, I find a little bit annoying in battle, of course, because it's a bit too uh, tall for the camera, but um, it's nice to have the option for sure. It is very strong at defending your cities. Onto the barracks then, and you'll notice we don't actually have a huge city barracks. That, to be fair, is to your advantage, though. You don't have to waste time money building a new barracks because this will get you the Poena infantry, pretty darn solid, all things considered. But really what you want is the Sacred Band, and they come out of the awesome Temple of Baal down here. 
This is the unit you're all been looking for, and you don't even need a huge city to get it. Shame that the uh, well, the AI basically never gets them anyway, but you can get them out in only your large cities. That is a big advantage for you. You need to make sure you're making that well into your use. Stables are definitely a strength of the Carthaginians. Right from minor city, you can get yourself elephants, and that is going to make a big difference in the early game if you know how to use them. Moving forward, they're never a waste of money because as you get stronger elephants, you're in an even better position. And the Sacred Band Cavalry are pretty darn solid when it comes down to it as well. So you're wanting to be able to build up all of your cavalry buildings. The stables are very strong indeed. The rangers though are less useful if I'm perfectly honest. Obviously you do want to get yourself siege equipment in the long term. Onagers, heavy onagers are always nice to have. But early on in the game you're not really going to be building much of these I suspect. Because you have the elephants to basically act as siege equipment. And because you don't have any archers, you're not really in a position where you're going to be desperately getting these guys out. The ranges, you might build it in one town, but frankly, they are not really the strong point of the Carthaginian army. From an economic standpoint, the Carthaginians are pretty strong, as you might well imagine. The merchant's quarter will get you everything you want at the huge city, and the dockyard is the highest level of port that you can get in the game. And of course, if you go down to the farming, it was obviously known as a great bread basket and with plus five to farm production, the great estates will always put you in a good place. Now, of course, the other thing you want to think about here is that you do have yourself things like the Scriptorium and the Baths. Now, they are going to have big problems with all this population growth and all these big farms with the Squalor. This is where Baths are really important. Get them nice and early and get your Scriptoriums, your Academies, your Ludus Magnus built because you want to train up your generals to be able to prevent the Squalor problems. It's a real big issue when you play as Carthage or around a lot of the Carthaginian and Sicilian settlements. Their growth is huge, lots of grain is swinging around the trade networks, which means population growth can go through the roof. So it's a good thing we have ourselves barred. Shame we don't have the aqueducts that you get from the Greeks and the Romans. But oh well, it's not the end of the world. But you certainly need to be quite active at making good use of good generals with good traits and also the public baths. You might notice that we've also got ourselves the foundry, great to have of course, but there's not really much more to be said about it, they're not really lacking anything there, and certainly when it comes to the roads, paved roads will do, sadly we don't get the Roman highways. Lastly is the law enforcement down here. Now the secret police network is simply very useful for the law, a bit scary if I'm honest with you, it uh, looks a bit dystopian, but you know what, it does the job in Rome Total War, and that's really what we're looking for here today. Overall, they're pretty well blessed, and of course, there are a few temples to look at, none at level 5 sadly, but overall, Carthage are looking pretty darn good. How did it all go down for Carthage in the real history then? Well, you probably know it doesn't end too well for Carthage, but that isn't to say they completely flop and collapse from the start. Now, we're starting here at 241 BC, that would be the end of the First Punic War, where the Romans took control of Sicily here. Now most of this was actually fairly closely fought, the Romans pushing hard, learning how to take on the navies of Carthage. Obviously the classic Corvus boat came along, but to be honest that's a bit of a one-time trick. In reality the Romans had to learn to become good seafarers like the Carthaginians. But the result of it meant that the Romans started to gain more and more power in the Mediterranean. By 218 BC, the Second Punic War had begun, and this is the classic war we think of where Hannibal crosses the Alps with his elephants and takes on the Romans, winning a string of huge victories like the Battle of Cannae and also the Battle of Lake Tresemene, one of the classic historical battles on Rome Total War. It is often stated that Hannibal knew how to gain victory, but not how to use it. And in some ways that's true, but it's a little bit unfair on him. Really, the problem he had was the council back at Carthage, who really couldn't quite push what he needed through to win and finish off the war. The Romans just didn't give up, and in time, Scipio Africanus would come over to Carthage to try and deal a major blow. The key victory for the Romans came at the Battle of Zama in 202 BC. Publius Cornelius Scipio, soon to be named Scipio Africanus of course, led an allied force with the Numidians to defeat Hannibal at long last. The 50 years following the Second Punic War were pretty harsh on Carthage. They were playing heavy war reparations to the Romans and this meant that to be honest they wouldn't be more than just a basic shell of their former self. The Romans would obviously find a pretext to invade again, and that happened at 149 BC, where a battle with the Numidians drew the Romans in to finish them off once and for all. 
The Third Punic War was pretty much a non-starter. Carfago de Lenda Est! The Romans were always going to win, and within three years in 146 BC, Carthage would be burnt to the ground and the earth itself would be sown with salt. Or so the story goes anyway. But 146 was a crucial year. Not only the end of our dear Carthage here, it was also the end of Corinth. Rome burnt this down in the exact same year with Greece and Carthage both falling, you really couldn't doubt the Roman powerhouse. Playing out a role play then of Carthage's history is perhaps out of the question. It's going to be a little bit of a sad end for you, although at least the AI will oblige by coming to take you out. No, I think we can probably be a little bit more creative with our planning. Now I suppose what you could do is go and actually finish off the war that Hannibal started, smash your way down Italy and take it out. That could be good fun indeed, but I think there are a few other little role play ideas that you could go for. Probably the most obvious roleplay idea is a migration campaign. You can take yourself back over here to Phoenicia and become the Phoenicians yourself. Sidon, one of the classic old cities of that empire. Maybe you can go and pick up your armies over here. Never worry about the Romans. Just take all of your troops, land them over here, go and smash up Egypt instead. And it would be quite nice to go and relive those heady old days of the Phoenician Empire and not worry about the pesky Romans. Thank you for joining me today on this campaign strategy guide to Carthage. Of course, there will be the battlefield strategy guide coming out on Tuesday. So do look out for that. We're going to look in much more depth at the Carthaginian army and exactly how you can use it. In the coming months, I am planning to do more of these guides. So do let me know which other factions you'd like to look at. Obviously, we will touch on their history as well as the ideal strategy inside the game itself. So put those in the comments below and we'll see what comes up next. But until then, I will leave you for now. I'm Thomas, this is Tenosa Human, and this has been Carthage's Campaign Strategy Guide. Thank you, and goodbye. Death and violence will come to you. This is a beautiful, beautiful town, by the way, guys. Let's go and smash it up. Dum, tum, ti 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 How did you die? What is happening to my men? Steve! He was the one man who tried!